Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different, a little bit more freeform, um, where basically I'm gonna be going over at a high level my career so far as a software engineer. Um, the reason this came up is because I've been doing a lot of interviews lately. And of course, there's always like a behavioral component of this. And a lot of them ask similar kinds of questions. Um, and so on the one hand, I wanted to kind of save what I'm kind of thinking about my career, how I kind of display it for posterity, but also thought it might be useful to just kind of see how I talk through my my career because I think it kind of clarifies all the random information on like my resume, etc. So a little bit different than normal, but hopefully you enjoy it. Hopefully it's a little bit useful to you. So now most of these interview questions really only ask for like, you know, the, the last like three-ish years of experience, but a few of them do um, phrase it in such a way that they want to see kind of your entire uh, experience. So I'm going to try to go over the entire experience for uh, completeness, but try to do it still like pretty fast and kind of an elevator pitchy way. Um, so often what they'll ask is, I guess less common is they'll ask like, how did you get into software engineering? And so that means they want you to kind of start off like at the beginning. And so I usually say, like, hey, I went to Georgia Tech for computer science. And the reason I got into coding and computer science is like, I always knew I wanted to build things. Um, but you know, I first started off trying to like build like physical things with Legos, etc. Um, but I quickly realized that it wasn't that efficient. There's a lot of overhead in doing this. Um, first of all, and just getting like the raw materials, you needed like money, you had to go to the store, you had to do these things. But also in like building stuff, like if you, you know, you can only use one piece of thing once. And so it, once you've built it, if you need to like recycle that, that, you have to like break it apart or if you want to create a new version of it you have to break it apart and then rebuild and that was a lot of rework um and so i kind of stumbled upon a uh, computer science because i was looking to make money online and i like found like a few uh like blogs that were about this um and they were talking about websites and so i started building my own websites and then i realized i could kind of build the same kinds of i mean maybe not the same kinds of things but i could build things with code and then when i wanted to change things it was so much easier i didn't have to like unscrew things or destroy the thing i already made i can literally just copy and paste it. And that was pretty satisfying. And as you got, you know, deeper into it, I realized that basically anything you can think of, you can build, which was very um, interesting to me and felt like a very satisfying approach to, to what I wanted to create. And so that's how I got into computer science. I went to Georgia Tech for computer science, like I said, and, you know, I kind of felt like I understood some of the fundamentals, but I didn't really understand how it all went together. Like, how do you build a real business with software? How do all of these, like, things fit together to, you know, run everything that a, a modern website like actually has a modern business actually has. I um, mean, so that's what I was looking for in my first um, kind of position out of college. Uh, I joined Applied Predictive Technologies, which is a small medium business um, doing a lot of like kind of data analytics stuff. Uh, I have been around for about 17 years. So it wasn't new, um, but it wasn't like big either. Um, and there I joined the architecture team. Uh, we're really building like core services. Um, some companies call this like the platform team uh, that basically all Microsoft services kind of need to run, all big businesses need to run. Um, so things like authentication, um, async uh, jobs or workloads, um, figuring out how to do service discovery, uh, and making all of this like very efficient for product teams to use. That's basically what we did. C Sharp .NET House um, learned a lot from uh, these people, like really good code quality standards, um, etc. And then worked on that for a while and then uh, moved over to a team that was focused on kind of data pipelines, if you will, our version of it. And I learned a lot there um, at my first job. And kind of worked on some things that were close to the highest scale that they had. I 10 x uh, one of our bottlenecks and like our job queuing service. And I thought that was like really cool, really satisfying. And I kind of wanted to do more of that. Um, but I kind of realized that at the scale that APT was running, that there weren't that many problems that were of that scale and like very few that were, were higher scale than that. And so I kind of realized that in order to kind of explore this problem of scale a little bit more, I either needed to like start my own thing that went really high scale, like build a unicorn basically, which is extremely unlikely, or just find a company that already had those scale problems. And so I went searching for that um, and eventually landed at Facebook, now Meta, because well, they gave me an offer and I knew that they would have like super duper high scale. Um, and so in the team matching process, I found a, a position at Instagram that kind of was doing the things that I was looking for um, and joined that team. And so this team was really focused on media delivery. Um, I was focused more on the video side, but basically when you look at a video or, or an image, there's been a lot of decisions for like how that image or, or video that, that media, if you will, gets to you. And so this team wasn't focused on like ranking or anything like that, or like what pieces of media you see in your feed, but it was focused on once that media has been chosen, what is the best version of this to give you? And so an example of this for like images might be, do we send you a JPEG? Do we send you a PNG? What size do we send?
send you. And for video, it's like the same kind of thing. Like what codec do we send you? What resolution do we send you? And we try to make this decision based on all sorts of things like the size of your phone, the network bandwidth, stuff like that. And so I was there for a little bit. Um, and then I kind of just became a de facto expert and kind of the logs and metrics that we were using to make those decisions for what to send you. Um, just because I was working on backend, I was like the only person doing video uh, on, on the backend side. And so whenever someone needed like a new metric or something like that, uh, I would usually be looped into that and I'd help them build that thing. But you know, as I was doing this, I was like, huh, like people are using this metric for this, but if I tra track like the, the raw log to here, I'm not sure it does what everyone thinks it does. Or maybe there's like an error where like there's some inaccuracy somewhere and I have to go solve it. Um, and so I started putting together kind of a list of all these problems and how I could fix it. Um, started working on some of these things on, on my own time or as part of firefights, uh, then eventually started proposing things that would get on the roadmap. And then eventually this got so big that uh, we ended up spending a whole team up around it um, called the media logging team, mostly focused on video, but really trying to take on most of media logs to metrics, trying to make sure that this data was really good for everyone that was using it. And while on that team, I led backend uh, for around three work streams. The first one is reliability. So making sure our, like computers are up or systems are up, they're they're performing well. Um, and realizing that, you know, accuracy is actually a big part of this because that's what reliability means to the customers of this data. The second one is really around cost optimization because you can imagine there's a ton of data flowing through these systems at all times. And we're trying to produce metrics um, with very high cardinality, um, very hard, very high like combinatorial um, complexity here. Um, and so doing that at scale cheaply is hard, um, but it's really important because otherwise this can kind of blow up in expense. And then the last um, work stream was really around fraud because we realized that a lot of people really want to boost their kind of Instagram numbers uh, to kind of mess with the algorithm to get more views to turn that into like ads or spam or scams, you know, whatever reason they're doing this for, um, but they really wanted to boost those numbers. And so that's what I did for about three and a half years. Um, and then around November 2022, about seven months ago, um, I kind of felt like I wanted to do something else. I'd kind of been, you know, at Meta Instagram for three and a half years alongside ever worked at a company. I'd been in the kind of metrics and logging space for, you know, two years, like fully staffed headcount, but basically three, if you look at like the kind of domains I was working in. I mean, I wanted something new. And at the time, you know, Meta was laying off uh, a lot of people, like internal mobility was kind of locked down. You weren't supposed to like change teams or anything. And so I thought it was a good time to like go off and do my own thing. And so on the side, I've, I've had Hammy Labs as kind of like my project folder for all my creation, my art and my technology, my little businesses I spin up. Um, and I've done that for like many years. And I had had like incorporated it back in 2021 to try and make this a little bit more official. Um, and I was like, you know, when I thought about my endless game or what I wanted to do for like the rest of my life, I kind of always assumed I wanted to like fire early and then just like build my own things, build my own business kind of stuff under the Hammy Labs like brand. And so I was like, okay, this is a good time for me to try something else. Um, try some startups, try these things that I think, or I've thought that I wanted to do kind of for the rest of my life and do that. And so I looked around at startups um, and then I also started trying to spin up my own things, working on my YouTube channel, working on um, some of the projects I'd submitted, working on new projects um, that I've uh, published since then and learned a lot of things. <laughs> I think the biggest thing I learned is that while I do want to create a lot of this stuff, I don't necessarily want to do it full time. And the reason is that as a solopreneur, you know, theoretically, you get a lot of freedom to do what you want, which is true, but doing what you want doesn't necessarily get the results that you need to make this a sustainable practice. And so uh, what I started realizing is that I was spending all my time like kind of building systems and stuff, which I like doing, I like building systems, but I wasn't really making much money from this. And when I kind of looked at the gaps from it, I realized that in order to make money from this, to make this kind of a sustainable practice, I really needed to work on my sales. I needed to work on my marketing and or just get like work on fundraising to get some runway to like make this thing happen. And those are all things that one, I don't think I'm very good at. And two, I don't know if I wanna put in the time to actually do this. Like I don't actually enjoy those things. And so while you have the freedom to like explore that and do it, it's kind of like anti-freedom if it's something you don't actually wanna do. <laughs> And so that's kind of what I learned um, in, the, in the seven months. And, and it was fun. I, I got to kind of do whatever I wanted. Um, and now where I'm kind of at after like seven months of that is, hey, I think I want to go back to software engineering because this kind of fulfills like my hedgehog principle, uh, the thing that I'm really good at, the thing that I enjoy and the thing that I can get paid for. Um, and so it's kind of less freedom in some ways, but it's actually more freedom because it's closer aligned with the things that I actually want to do with my time and my skills and my effort. And that's kind of where I am today. And so that's basically 
is my full complete background. Um, obviously a little bit uh, wordy. I'd probably have to cut that down for like a real interview to maybe a quarter of the size, um, but you can't double click into anything. So just for completeness. Uh, while we're here, usually the, the next interview question is like, what are you looking for in the future? And basically I've categorized this into kind of three buckets, um, which I talk about in my, my reflection uh, for this half, if you want to read more about that. Um, but basically the three buckets are impact. I want this thing to be good for the world. It doesn't need to be world changing, but it needs to like not be bad for the world basically. And ideally this is an impact that I feel personally, or I understand personally, um, because I think that brings a lot of fulfillment. The second one is growth. Um, both in my career, yes, as like a more senior IC, but also in my career, uh, when I think about it as like my craft, my skills, um, this is something I really like doing is building these systems. And so I want to continue being able to do that with my time. And so I need to make sure that whatever org or thing I work on allows me to do that. And then the third one is around personal fit, which is uh, different than any of my previous job searches, but I've realized that I think this is really important for your day to day to match up with what you actually want to do. Because if that's not there, like for instance, in solopreneurship, that actually wasn't there, the personal fit wasn't there because of the jobs it was forcing me to do, then no matter how good it is on paper, it's just not gonna work out for you long term, I don't think. So yeah, that's it for this rambly video. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.